again from simplysnappingmom.com and today we get the joy of learning about ISO. In this module, we're going to tie everything together that we learned in other modules and learn all about what ISO is and how it ties into manual mode. Now, if you haven't yet, make sure you watch the other videos on aperture and shutter speed so that you can understand what we're talking about in this video. I'm going to give a summary on those modules, however, though. So to summarize what we learned about in the other modules, the first camera setting we talked about was aperture. Aperture, which is determined by the f-stop number on your camera, determines how large the opening is in your camera lens. It could be large or small, just like the pupil of an eye, to let in more light or less light. Then we talked about shutter speed, which you think of as your eyelid. Your shutter speed can have a fast shutter speed where you blink fast or a slow shutter speed where it's open longer. The slow shutter speed will allow more light to get into your camera, but it will also allow you to see movement blur in your picture if your subject is moving. The reason I wanted to remind you of these camera settings is because throughout all of my talks on photography, you notice that I talk a lot about lighting. Lighting is the most important thing you have to understand when you're talking about your camera settings. Everything that you do determines the exposure of your picture or how sensitive your picture is to the light. Yes, you could affect the movement blur. Yes, if you change those settings, you could have background blur. But the one thing you really have to pay attention to if you want to learn how to use manual mode is lighting. And this is where ISO comes in. ISO, if you think back about the old cameras that used to use film, ISO determined how sensitive the film was to light. A low ISO number means your camera is not very sensitive to light. You have to be somewhere where it's bright to take pictures that have appropriate exposure. A high ISO is very sensitive to light. So if I had my camera ISO high and I went outside in the sun, my picture would look white. You wouldn't be able to pick up on anything because it was too much light, it's too sensitive. However, in a dark room, you want your camera to be sensitive to light so that you can pick up on things and bring in more light into your picture. Depending on your camera and your lens, you might have a different range of values that you can pick from for your ISO. You always want to remember that you want to use the lowest ISO possible. If you use higher ISOs, you can take pictures in dark rooms. However, the trade-off is the picture is going to be grainy or what we sometimes call noisy. I'm going to show an example of this here. In this picture here, I used an ISO of 100 on my son. You can't even see him because we're in a dark room. If I bump up the ISO, suddenly you can see him in the picture. The camera at a higher ISO is more sensitive to light. However, if you zoom in, you can see that the picture is grainy. The quality is not that good. Again, you want to remember that you should always use the lowest ISO you can the darker it is, the higher you might have to bump up that number, but it's going to be grainy. So here are some times where I used ISO to get the picture that I wanted. So again, to summarize, ISO determines the sensitivity of your camera to light. You always want the lowest ISO possible. However, it's a great feature that you have on your camera that you're able to bump that ISO up to take pictures in low light using the other settings that you want. Just you always want to keep in mind, the higher you go, the grainier that picture is going to be. Now we're going to tie everything in together. I like to think of it is my camera has two main settings, the aperture and the shutter speed. 
You can adjust those based off of what type of picture you're taking. Do you want movement blur? Then lower your, your f-stop. Do you, are you taking pictures of a fast moving subject? Increase your shutter speed. Play around with those. That is where you have control over what your picture looks like. I like to think of ISO as a separate feature to support my other two camera settings. Once I have aperture and shutter speed where I want them, I use ISO to make sure that my camera picture will be exposed properly. So here's an example. In this picture, I wanted a low f-stop number so I could get some background blur. I also needed a super fast shutter speed so that the glitter didn't look like blur moving across my camera. I wanted the glitter to be seen, but it was a dark evening. So I had to bump my ISO to 600. That gave me the exact picture that I wanted. In this next picture, similar situation. We were indoors and the subjects were moving so I had to have a fairly fast shutter speed. I bumped down my aperture but not too low because I was taking pictures of two people and I didn't want one to be blurry. But I had to bump my ISO up to 1600 to get this shot. So the only way to really understand your camera settings is to get out there and practice. Again, to summarize everything we learned, put your camera in aperture priority mode so that you can test out what happens when you change the f-stop. Put your camera in shutter speed priority mode so that you can know what happens to your picture when you change your shutter speed around. And lastly, use ISO to support everything you learned to get the picture that you want. Take a look at this guide here. You can find this guide on my blog by subscribing to my email list at simplysnappingmom.com. When you subscribe, you get access to all of my free vi videos and free resources, including this one. This image explains what happens when you change all three settings on your camera. The only way to really understand your camera is to get out there and practice. Thanks for watching all of my videos. I hope this made snapping a little more simple for you. Head on over to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash simply snapping blog and like it for up to date discussions on photography and family. And make sure you check out our blog at simply snapping mom.com. Again, if you subscribe to the email list, you'll get access to all of our freebies to help you with your photography journey. Thank you so much for watching.